Hello, Rachel. Yay! We did it, we did it, we did it. How are you, Jasper? I'm very good. Some technical difficulties, but it worked two it minutes at a time. Yes, we're not very we're not very Swiss punctual here, huh? You're in Swiss now. Yes, I am. I'm gonna oh. actually I'm gonna actually show I'm bragging a bit. Look, check it out. Wow. Yeah, that doesn't look like Barcelona. No, <laughs> we had to we had to um, leave uh, very quickly Barcelona. I had my mother and my sisters over, and uh, yeah, and before the whole um, European borders shut down, we hopped on the car and uh, drove to Switzerland. Makes sense. More air. Um, Rachel, thank you so much for joining uh, this uh, first time show. Um, I mean, the the whole reason why I wanted to talk with you is uh, because you are an expert within radio promotion and promotion and marketing in general for, for artists. Um, and uh, I just really wanted to have a chat with you to see if there would be anything that you do now you have a lot of time in hand. Um, and uh, just generally uh, learn a little about about what you do, and um, and see if uh, if any of our audience would uh, would ask some interesting questions for you and and me, um, and then we'll we'll see how it goes. Fantastic! Absolutely, let's do this. Yes. So I don't know I don't know uh, how how big our audience is because I don't see it but I'm sure you see everything. I think yeah. we're all, we're we're already we're live like people that we're have subscribed, you're live. So people that have subscribed can actually see us and hear yeah. us. Yes. Cool. I think so. Um maybe you can start by telling a little bit about uh, your company and and what you do, how you work with promotion in general and radio. Okay, so basically um, the, the business model that we are now applying is a business model that has about two and a half years. Um, we, we are, well, my company is a Swiss company, but based out of Barcelona. At the moment, everything is a bit weird because everyone's a bit um, uh, based in different places, but normally... We're based in Barcelona. We have uh, Carlos that he's based in Mexico City and we have Alice and she's based in London. So um, the company is a consultancy company. We're, we're very data driven. So we promote um, and we promote we promote music, but we promote also artists, and so that there's a an overall um, added value of branding in like on a, on, a, on a bigger scale. Our clients are labels, uh, our artists, our managers. Um, our artists can be, or like, let's say the music that we are promoting can be self-released or it can be with an independent label or it can be with a major label so we're very we're very flexible um to uh, to how we work uh music and and generally we'll try to work music on a 360 degrees so we'll do everything from uh the radio pitching to the playlist pitching to blog pitching uh we'll be checking social media and seeing and advising uh the artist or manager to post certain things rather than others uh we'll be working hand in hand depending on the project we can be working hand in hand with prs or we could be working hand in hand with the social media specialists so it really depends on who the client is and what the project is so um I hope that I that people are not falling asleep already, and um, and that I've I've been clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, so how does this uh, differ from you know you know you know you mentioned that you work with major labels, but how does that f differ from what major labels do themselves uh, in terms of you being a consultant for them? So so I think it's it's a question of time allocation. Um, and so, so basically, depending, I mean, of course, if you're Kelvin Harris, you will have, well, apart from his like personal team in terms of management and his personal PR and 
personal like team team but in terms of the label the label will probably allocate a lot of manpower a lot of people to actually work kelvin harris's single uh when you're not kelvin harris or you're not ed Sheeran, and that you do want to have um uh, a worldwide promotion then i think you will need to um well invest and work in a in a more um boutique way and try to do what majors would do with a, what they call a priority track so wh what we do is we'll go well let's say for example if we work for warner uk we'll work for warner uk and we'll work on on a track that for them is a priority so we will work within the warner structure and we will go and knock at warner italy warner france warner canada warner south africa uh, warner australia etc etc and make sure that all these territories all these countries receive the press kit the music the 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 ammunition that they need to actually work the track so whatever if the artist has shows in their country if the artist has already um passed uh nice stories to tell um if there's anything we can maximize uh, and bring within France and and Canada and whoever all these countries that we will translate the assets and we will go there and try to help them basically. Okay, so so what what I hear you saying is that you kind of work across the different um, uh, regions or countries and try to help them maximize. Yes. Because yes, most of, of the local uh, countries, are, are the different countries are working specifically in their country. So you yeah. kind of maybe more support the, the international team effort or exactly. something. Exactly. Exactly. That's what, exactly what we do. We do support the international team's effort. Um, when, as I said, when you're Kelvin Harris, you are in a top priority. So the international team will definitely work you like a priority. If you're not like an official priority, Everyone receives so much music. There is so much music around. The, the the Warner office in France will probably have their own priority, will have the UK priority, will have the American priority. And yeah. if you are not in those in those parameters, you probably I mean your music will be in the system, but will not be worked. And so now you mentioned like the large territories like uh, UK and France and US, etc. What about smaller uh, countries like uh, in Eastern Europe, for example, or uh, like Lithuania, for example, or, or 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 markets that are not necessarily that important for for makers? Is that something that you tap into as well? Well, yes, but then, you know, it's, I was giving the example of when we work within a major company, but we also work with self-releases uh, where mm. artists are literally self-releasing. So in this case, the approach will be different. Uh, we will not have offices in all the countries because a self-release is a self-release, but we will still go out and, 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 and approach radios, approach playlists, approach blogs, approach promoters, etc., etc., to really maximize. And, 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 and Lithuania or Estonia or wherever it is, it's, there are, well, in my opinion, there are no territories that are not important. Everything has its importance because one, there is an interest for the artist and two, uh, it, it's fan base and, and, uh, and an artist is not an artist without fans so you can start your fan base in lithuania and then it might roll over throughout the whole baltics and then thanks to that it will start rolling over to germany and boom big country big big more fans etc 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 so i think it's always important to start somewhere and wherever that somewhere is it's it's about maximizing and doing we often call it the snowball effect so the the ball might be really small at the beginning and it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and and we're there to help this bigger and bigger and bigger and then again you know if an artist is from i don't know sicily south of like in italy and and he has a huge fan base in lithuania it's anyway super cool for him to share in his social media that he has 
fans in Lithuania because the Italians will be like, oh, wow, check it out. He has fans in Lithuania. Plus, this is a one step because then step number two might be he can get shows in Lithuania and, mm. and go and really have an actual direct connection then to his fan club. Yeah, and, 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 and speaking of that, I guess also something about reaching out to the radios is, is something that you do uh, uh, yeah. quite a lot, right? And, and is that something you feel that, uh, let's say, artists themselves could do or, or, or labels in general? Or, or would they need like a specialist like you or, 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 or another radio uh, promoter or promoter in general? Or, or is that like, is there like something you can do yourself in terms of, of you know, uh, exploiting the fact that 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 a radio has played you or, or is uh, interacting with a certain artist or song? So, I mean, I think in terms of radio, we approach radios in two different ways. One is an actual radio pitching, where we will go out there and connect with radios. We'll have in the connection with radios, two types of connections. One that are actual connections where we know the radio people, where we'll send an email saying, hey, you already supported this and this and this, and are you interested in that and that and that? So that's the one approach to radios we are already in touch with. And then there'll be another reaching out to radio in general and hoping for the best. This is the one type of radio connection. And then there's the second radio connection, which is, picking up organic plays. Mm. Uh, there are many things that are happening organically um, by chance or by mistake, depends if you're a positive or a negative person, but, uh, but there are many things that are just happening. And, and if, you don't, if, if you're there to see them happen, you're also there to pay attention to them and to create the snowball effect. And, 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 and out of maybe a one organic play you can maybe get three organic plays and then you can start getting an actual play consi consistency in plays because if you reach out to the radio and you're like hey thank you so much radio jesper for supporting my track one the radio will be super happy that you they've been noticed mm -hmm. and number two well they'll be like wow i'm I'm noticed. It's something that is, is, is you know, I'm, I'm, I'm important. So, uh, and then you can even offer an ID and saying, hey, this is Rachel. You're listening to Radio Jesper. Well, then, obviously, if the radio gets an email to say thank you and an email with an ID, for sure the radio will be playing more. So, if it was a one, two, three, four, whatever plays that were organic initially, afterwards it will be an actual you know, relationship and support from the radio to Rachel, for example. That's interesting because I, I feel that uh, some, let's say a, a big part of the industry is very much focusing on, focusing on, on getting airplay on certain stations, like certain large terrestrial radio stations. Um, whereas I sometimes, think that there is actually a lot of, um, it, it, it might be easier to actually to inter interact with the smaller radio stations. So is there like, is there like a point where you say, oh, this is uh, such a big, uh, such a small radio station, so we don't want to spend our time on that? Or, or do you kind of like, you know, open the books and, and go for whatever rocks or I guess you prioritize, but is there like certain stations where you say, oh, they're, they're so small, so we don't, we don't want to bother them. I don't know. I mean, I don't think. Again, I, I think. I think it's all about uh, getting the the most out of every situation. And uh, yesterday, I had we were we were on a very interesting conference call with one of our artists, and and the PR because we're not doing his PR. He has a he has a he has a really good uh, PR on board, and the PR asked him saying, well. Uh, what type of premiere would you like your video on? And um, who would be, let's say, what, what, what's your wish? What should we work for? And, and he answered in a very, very interesting way. Um, for him, it wasn't about being the biggest or the coolest. It was about trying to be placed or having a placement within a blog or a media that was a tastemaker, that 
the audience of that media knows that that media doesn't pick up anything. They pick up what they consider good or what they consider credible or what they consider qualitative, etc., etc. So basically, I thought it was very interesting, his, his approach of not saying, I just want the biggest, I want billboard. No, he didn't necessarily want billboard. He wanted an outlet that was credible, that the fan base of that outlet said, wow, if that track is picked up, it means something. And, and I think that there are many radios out there that the people that are listening, maybe they're not the BBCs or the energies or the, the, the big ones, but the people that are listening will discover music. And so even though they're small, they will be the tastemakers and then people will shazam and then thanks to those shazam then the numbers go up and might go on some apple playlists etc 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 so again snowball effect yeah yeah because i guess like you know at least from what what i know that that at, at least large terrestrial radio stations for example like bbc energy kiss capital whatever they are they have a tendency to be very very commercial uh, depending on the show, obviously, but it seems like if you are Calvin Harris, you know, it's probably maybe you don't even have to push it. I mean, then it, 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 it will just be get played because it's a new big single and the artist is famous. But whereas uh, smaller radio stations, uh, it could be in niches like a uh, rock radio station in certain countries and or college radios, for example, they, it seems like they have a much more um independent mindset so that they can actually play whatever they want and they it does not necessarily have to be the biggest artist maybe it's even better for them to play uh, something they have handpicked or found uh, in iceland or something rather than just playing you know the the latest uh Ed Sheeran record or something Absolutely, I could not agree more. Uh, uh, to piggyback on that, uh, probably for Kelvin Harris, if he's not played on BBC, would be a big drama because then uh, uh, probably the whole team will be like, "Oh my God, let's 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 go to a new track because that's a flop," mm. uh, you know. So so um, it, it's different approaches based probably on 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 the artist and on the music. But yes, I, I absolutely agree with you that. Um, uh, it's it's not necessarily being on the big ones. Again, to piggyback on that, the big ones will probably be paying more rights, like more neighboring rights, more Absolutely. public execution rights. So that's also, in a way, um, in terms of finances, being on a big radio will probably uh, bring more money in. Of course, but then again, you probably have to wait a couple of years before you receive the money oh, anyway. Um, <laughs> but I, but but I agree, and and I think also that some, you know, especially niche radios, for example, indie, folk, whatever, even electronic music, you know, it it is more about handpicking certain things and and try to find something new and interesting. Uh, on the contrary, to just play. You know the the latest or the newest stars or the the, the newest records. Yeah, absolutely. And so, with this in mind, uh, you know, can you maybe uh, give some tips or ideas or like what can, let's say, an, an artist watching this or a label, uh, like indie label, what what can they do uh, by themselves in terms of 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 uh, of, of getting. Uh, radio airplay and and finding the right stations or do they need like a professional like yourself or, or, or well, others? I mean uh, of course I'm uh, we're not going to close doors here if, if somebody wants to work with us we're definitely going to uh, uh, check it up but uh, but I do think it's all a question of time allocation again uh, it's just about the time and um, if you have the time to to to, to do the job do it. I don't think, um, again, and it's about re building relationships and relationships uh, take time to be built. But then again, you can try. And, and, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But um, if you don't have a budget, but you do have time, you can definitely do it yourself. 
And I guess also if someone can, like whether you're a label or an artist, but if you can do something yourself, I guess it also makes it easier in the next phase if you want to invest in, in, uh, in actual promotion or consultancy. Well, yeah, but then you become a very picky uh, client, huh? Because then you know what it means and you know what it takes and then yeah. you really expect, um, uh, expect. well, your expectation might be sometimes higher because you've done it and you know how you can succeed. Uh, so then there's no excuses. Things have to work, right? Especially yeah. if you then spend the money to get a professional. You definitely expect a better result than if you would be doing it yourself. Yeah, and and I know for a fact, obviously, uh, that that you that you kind of like make your own databases and and try to figure out what when you send something to a radio station, do they reply or not? And maybe someone are more, you know, interactive or more positive than others, and and you kind of use that to to build, uh, you know, you, you know, your database and infrastructure for for promoting artists and take you know talking about this i guess there's also an option to actually look for similar radio stations or or similar artists and see um you know what's been played and is that something that 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 we can piggyback on actually of course absolutely i mean i think it's all about targeting and, and depends of how you target and uh, we approach things in a in a very well as i said data driven but then in a way it's also um, a, a quite scientific way you try in a way and if it doesn't work you'll try in a different way and you try to target because based off but and then again you don't want to target calvin harris you want to target something that is at yourself same level something that is in the same genre something that is the same country something that is in the same release same label etc 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 so yeah it's about um narrowing down um as much as possible again yesterday i was on a, call, a conference call where we were talking with some social media specialists and they were like well it depends on how much you want to narrow down the more you narrow down the more you will probably hit a goal of a more um let's say real target than if you go very broad saying i'm going to hit everybody that is a woman in switzerland well you might have mm. three million people but then if you say a woman in her 30s that listens to this that has that so then you start narrowing down and it's exactly the same with radio with playlists with blogs um yeah, yeah. With the label you would want to release on yeah and speaking of playlists uh, and like tapping to the streaming uh, yeah. maybe this is a little bit of a trick question because there's probably a, a, a right and wrong answer or but but how important do you see radio uh, in terms of breaking an artist, uh, maybe compared to streaming? I, ge I guess there has to be both, but is there like an approach where something is, you know, you can use something for the other or, or, or like, uh, how do you, how do you uh, focus on well, I think I think I think there's uh, there's no there's no real answer. I mean, I think the a person that is uh, working within a, a radio, they will say that um, uh, radio will make the music, and the person that works within the streaming industry will say streaming makes the music. But then, very often, things go hand in hand. But then again, there are but then there's exceptions, and there's always exceptions, and then you can't take that one exception as uh, a rule because there might be this track that went crazy on radio and didn't get streams uh, or went crazy on and, sorry or vice versa well vice versa and so so um, and those but, but in my opinion those are exceptions unless you go on really crazy genre like music genres that are non radio phonic or music genre that are really not streamable but but still generally things go hand in hand so is there like um certain genres that you would not work in terms of radio or is it more about the the quality of the music well i don't know there's many different types of genre in general and i think mm. i would i would uh, i would uh, 
I would not be humble enough if I would say uh, I know all types of genre. I'm not sure if, if I would have a client come to me with some Japanese lyrics, uh, traditional music to say, please work this track worldwide. I'll be like, ooh, that might be tricky. Um, I would need to do some research and targeting things. So um, so I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm probably, I mean, there are genres that are more difficult to stream, uh, mm. like uh, if if you have the I don't know this like the super techno tracks that are eight minutes long, um, those might not be super streamable. But then again, I'm not even sure if they'll be very radiophonic. They'll be still on certain niche radios that will be uh, supporting that type of music. Yeah, because I, I would I, I mean now I, I know you quite a lot, and uh, and I mean you you work with Chesto and Chami and uh, Spinning Records and like uh, you know at least pretty aggressive electronic music uh, to say the least. And um, is that is that something that uh, I mean I guess that's doable for radio, right? It's just about finding the right okay. radio. It's, it's all, yeah, exactly. It's it's really always about targeting. So so we we have we we actually picked up last uh, winter um, a, a, a hard style track, which um, which I really well actually it was very interesting because um, I come from the trans world, so I've, I've 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 done quite a lot within the hard style world. So um, so for me it wasn't a new world, but. My my fantastic PA Lenora, which I say say hi to, uh, she had she had never uh, well she had well she had heard hardstyle but she didn't know what hardstyle was so it was a bit of a, a test for her and she ended up loving it and we got so much support even lo quite a lot of radios a lot of playlists a lot of blogs we got a lot of support and initially I'm sure that. At the beginning, if I would have, well, when I would have told her, do you think we're going to be able to have some good success on this track? She'll be like, oh my God, no. But we ended up having really, really good success. And the management was super happy. The artist was super happy. And even though it was a hard style track, we, we did really well. Okay, so uh, I, I mean, with that into account, I'm assuming that genres is not necessarily an issue with radio if you can uh, if you can promote hard style. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, we started. We worked uh, a year and a half ago um, uh, a rock uh, band from Australia. We got radio even in Mexico. And so, in in that sense, what what did the band? What was was the band able to do with this in terms of the uh, you know other publicity or something? Could, could they do more in Mexico then? Well, actually, it was it was interesting because that was for Universal Australia uh, that we worked the the the, the track and um, actually the the Carlos that I say hi to too that is in Mexico City uh, he locked in quite a lot of great promotion in Mexico and he linked the management of the band to a festival promoter and the next step that we of course were not involved in anymore because we just opened the doors and made the, the connection was that hopefully that band will go to Mexico and tour. That, that sounds like a great story at least. <laughs> Yeah, um, so, so there's, I mean, I think I think there's no limits, and it's really about. And then again, I mean, I imagine that if the band was asking for a crazy amount of money, it wouldn't happen. But if there's radio support, if there's something happening, and then the, the, that connection happens, there's no limits. That that will have. And then, I mean, for the Australian band to show the fan base that they have fans in in, in Mexico, that they are broadcasted in Mexico is such an added value. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, I guess it's back to the snowball effect, right? And, and like, if you are from Iceland and you get played in Australia, maybe that in itself is actually quite a good story uh, in terms of maybe local uh, promotion or marketing in, in Iceland then. 
Absolutely. No, no, but 100%. And, you know, it's interesting because I was speaking to an, another manager a few months ago and, and he was telling me, well, actually, the, the artist was Sophie Tucker. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and he was telling me that it was super good to have as much monitoring as possible of what was happening because uh, they went and performed in Moscow and the people were singing the songs, like literally singing the lyrics. And they were so surprised because they had no idea that they were popular in Moscow so that's also why it's super important to be monitoring what's happening and that's also super important to create that snowball effect because uh okay Sophie Tucker is a big uh, is a big act but uh, uh well now but they grew up and it was one step at a time and, and and it's really about you know building that presence all around the world and and, and building 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 to be able to become a worldwide known artist. And speaking of that, I, I, I think something that could be interesting to tap into is this uh, local versus global mindset um, that we talked about before. It, it seems like, um, you know, it, 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 in a lot of part of the industry, again, it, it's important that you, if you're a German artist, you need to break through in Germany before someone can do something in other countries. Um, but I guess, for example, with electronic music or, or, or at least music in a, in a global language like English or Spanish or whatever, then it, it does not necessarily have to be, you know, the fact that you need to, to do something in your own country. Because I guess, at least from what I feel, is that with actually the help from streaming and various service, music gets distributed anywhere instantly. So a curator or a radio DJ or influencer or whatever can f easily find the music uh, with the help of, of, of algorithms of, of, uh, of, of streaming, for example, in, in a completely different country. Uh, oh, absolutely. And yeah, I, I kind of neglected at, at, at some times, right? It so seems like, you know, you have to do something here before you can do something here, but who knows if your fan base is, is in a different country. Oh no! But absolutely, you know. Um, uh, back in two thousand and eight, uh, I was working on a on an artist called Yves La Rock, and uh, we have uh, we had a huge success called Rise Up. And even though Eve is from Switzerland, uh, he was charting all around the world before he was charting in Switzerland. He was touring in places like uh, uh, Azerbaijan um, more than he was in Switzerland. Uh, we we had the the, the big boom was in Portugal. Portugal was huge. He did 45 dates in Portugal throughout the summer and practically didn't do dates in Switzerland. So um, it, you can't really say you have to be big in your own country before going out. Um, there's no rule to that. And then sometimes there are, like you perfectly said, there's 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 no boundaries anymore. You, you go out worldwide and uh, sometimes before even being a success story within your own country. But maybe that's actually like a big between major labels and indie labels because usually, again, they have offices in different countries which prioritize their own country. That makes sense. Uh, but as a you know, a small, medium-sized indie label, you don't necessarily have you know sixty different offices. So in that sense, it would make more sense to you know go broader and 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 actually, this takes me to um, this uh, very nice analogy you told me when we met in uh, Barcelona a couple of months ago. Uh, can you tell me the analogy and so that? So I need, I need to quote. I need to quote uh, Bertrand Picard, which is a, a Swiss, uh, which is a Swiss um, adventurer slash doctor slash scientist. Um, he uh, he did the uh, the all around the world with a with a Luftballon. Now I have it in German uh, with a with a air with a air a hot air balloon, and um, and and he created this uh, what is called Solar Impulse, which is the first um, first airplane that with solar can wanted to do the whole like go around the world i don't know exactly where he is at the moment but anyway uh, mr picard um wrote a very good book which now i forget the name and and he was there's this one analogy between being a vesp 
and being a bee. So a bee, we like bees, right? They make honey and, and they're so clever and and they're so sweet. I mean, they die when they, if they sting you, they die. I mean, there's this whole very, you know, human, empathic, uh, nostalgic thing about bees. And then there's vests. We don't really like vests, right? I mean, they don't die when they sting you. And I don't know, they're, they, don't, they, they seem quite useless. But there's a big difference between being a bee and being a vest. A bee, even though she's super clever, et cetera, et cetera, when she's in front of the, a, a window, she will come and hit the window again and again and again and again in the same spot until she dies. But the vest, on the other hand, is way more survivor and she will come and hit one side and then she'll go and hit another and will go and hit another and will go and hit another and and then when she'll see that this is a whole window she'll start flying around in the apartment or in the house until she'll try to find an opening and probably will survive and get out of the apartment or house she's in so it's about being a vesp and finding the b plan and the c plan and the d plan or, and, and trying to try something it doesn't work go next. And that's actually really a scientific approach to many things. Scientific people, if it's in chemistry or in, in medicine, they'll try something, doesn't work, let's try another one, maybe quite close to it, let's change a few parameters and, and, and let's move things around to make them work. So like if you try to get your music on large radio stations and, and they don't uh, necessarily respond or interact, so maybe one step on smaller ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, one step lower, another market, another type of genre, uh, different targets. Modify, modify your research, refine your research and continue. Um, I got a question here from uh, one of from our audience, uh, Wooden Peak. Um, mm -hmm. He is a, or he or she, I'm, I can't see, but uh, is asking, uh, can you recommend a good solution for professional mail outs and follow ups? Um, and I guess that's actually quite interesting because it speaks a little bit to, you know, you know, d doing mass, you know, spam promotion versus hyper-targeted pro pro uh, personalized promotion. Uh, I wonder if you could tap into that a little bit. Okay, so um, uh, we never, ever, ever send mass mail outs. One, because now spams have become really illegal. And uh, two, because it just doesn't work. People will get so much information and when they see that it's a mass mail out, it just doesn't, people don't care. So um, we work with the CRM. There's quite a few CRMs out there to help uh, refine your, uh, well, keep all your data in place and, and, and learn from experiences because you don't, I mean, unless you're, you have a crazy memory and you remember exactly what you did and when, uh, we work with CRMs. But you can work with Excel sheets, which really work out. But back to the initial, uh, with, 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 the, with the initial like question here, mass mail outs, no way, doesn't work. It just does not work. You need to be personal. You need to take that time to go to the people and show them that one, you know who they are. And two, you are proposing something because you know that they will want that something. So you need to hit your target in the best way possible. Give yourself the maximum chances possible. Yeah. And follow up. So, and follow up. Same. When you follow up, it's not just saying following up on the below because they will probably won't even scroll down to see what the below is. And and it's about taking the time to stalk maybe people slightly and maybe go and see on their Instagram or on their Facebook who they are, what they are, what they've done, what they supported, and be personal. That's the only way you can start building relationships, in my opinion. Yeah, because I guess it is, yeah, as you mentioned, it is about being personal and, and a little bit stalkish. And I guess, like, at least something that I've experienced, something like LinkedIn, for example, are, are super effective because you, you know, if you, you know, can find people there, there is a more bigger response rate. You know, you don't have a lot of adverts, it's very professional. So if you kind of like find a radio station, find an actual um, um, curator or, or DJ, host, whatever, and you can find that person on LinkedIn, start a conversation. 
maybe and sometimes that can even be a better approach than just like sending them a link to listen to my music uh, on an email that maybe even ends in spam or whatever exactly absolutely and then sometimes if people don't reply it's not because they didn't want to not reply sometimes yes but sometimes it's just because they're overloaded and don't lose hope and try again and maybe in a more personal way or in a different method if it's not an email it could be maybe through a message or whatever linkedin or instagram or whatever in a personal way that is not spamming and be creative i guess yeah, absolutely yeah and and emojis are good i, I love emojis i put emojis everywhere <laughs> take that into note um I, I got another one here asking holy smoke music uh, he's asking, uh, or she again, I don't know. Uh, can an artist, can an indie artist get music on Sirius XM? And if yes, is there a good approach? Um, and I, I guess that's very, very specific. Uh, of course, Sirius is a very, very big uh, satellite radio and super, super important uh, in the States. But is there like, um, like, how would you approach something like that? I mean, I guess it's about finding the right music to begin with, uh, but where do you start if you're an indie artist? And is that at all possible? Or, or would you need I would uh, especially, especially, and this is, this is giving maybe, I mean, I personally think that there is more hope to go on a serious um, X, uh, X, uh, XM than even a BBC. Um, they, and, and maybe, there, there's, I mean, there's hope to be on it. Stay on it. It means that your track is performing because they have a lot of data analyzing depending on on performances, um, which is which is fascinating and very interesting because okay, I, I don't think they share much of their data, but mm. uh, they they literally analyze um, performances of their tracks. So absolutely there is a chance of being an indie artist on Sirius in my opinion and how you do that probably the same way as you would with normal radio with a bit of luck or you can go and get a radio plugger in America pluggers are extremely expensive um, but uh, but but you could get a radio plugger or just try it try try it try by by by, by chance and, and, and actually that could also be interesting to talk a little bit about because usually as I understand it, you know, you could hire a radio blogger or a radio promoter in, in, a, in the UK or in Germany or in Belgium or in US or whatever. And depending on the size of the territory or country, it's super expensive, obviously, and obviously no guarantees. Um, but from what I understand and what you've talk, told me, uh, you were quite different. So, yeah, no, we, we don't, I mean, Depend. Sometimes we have we we have a radio plugger on our team, but it's not because we decided. It's just because it's part of the management or part of the label, etc. So, yeah, we 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 are we're, well. We don't consider ourselves as radio pluggers um, because normally radio pluggers are national. So um, you'll have a radio plugger that is in Germany, and he will only do Germany or mm. okay. Only maybe let's say exception could be Benelux because it's literally like mm. uh, 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 Belgium, uh, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. But but generally, radio pluggers will work in their own let's say uh, territory because they're specialized in that. Uh, we generally will go worldwide. We'll go worldwide and and hope for the best. There's this one really interesting question of Brian. Sorry, yeah. that Brian. Brian says that um, that he found 40 stations through Warm, uh, uh, but then but then Googled and uh, yeah, it was it was the, and only one station answered. Yes, but that's the thing. You need to be a wisp, and and if only one answered, then it's about understanding at what time the radio play happened. Uh, if if it, if it was during a night program or during a day program, understanding who played it because it's possible that if your track was played at five on Wednesday, well, go and Google and see what is happening at five on Wednesday on that radio. If it's radio show ABC, well, then you need to approach radio show ABC to go and 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 and, and pitch your your track to that specific show. Yeah, because I guess it's also depending on the size of the of the station, 
there can be many different people working at a radio and just because someone played it does not necessarily mean that you know everyone else was informed or that everyone else would play it so i guess it's back to you know the as you mentioned the wasp thing like actually you know trying to you know maybe integrate with their uh, social media as exactly. played it uh, and 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 not just necessarily find a, an information at email and then expect some kind of answer i guess exactly absolutely and it's exactly that it's really about understanding when it was played and if there's a show playing at that play and then trying to actually find the person that is responsible of that show via social media etc etc and and yeah don't give up brian <laughs> <laughs> that's good um so um i guess we are kind of like uh, getting to the end of this but um is there any like uh, tips and tricks or low hanging fruits we could summarize in terms of what you feel um like do it yourself artists or labels could could do um or 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 do you have any um no i mean i think i think i think i i i gave a bit of a good recipe here. I think Brian is probably um, is probably gonna, gonna try to do things slightly, be more wespy. Yeah. Um, but uh, but but yes, it, it's really it's really about um, perseverance, making things as personal as possible, and one project, two project, three project, and and when you reach out to say thank you, try to you know reach out to the right person because as you perfectly said if it's an info uh, email address then go and try to see who's working there via facebook via linkedin and and in that way trying to approach in the best you know and, and building the relationship and and uh, just uh, to to round off by like can you maybe tell a little bit about how how has uh, warm helped you um as a tool versus uh, other uh, systems that you probably have used a lot previously so i mean aside from the fact that um warm has a huge i mean like a big 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 quantity of of radio tracking there are other uh, you you have other competitors of course on the market but w nobody is anywhere close to the quantity of radios you're tracking the cool thing the, with Worm, in my opinion, is that then you can also go and notify uh, uh, and and add new radio stations. But but uh, like today, typically, I did a print screen of a result of a, of, a, of one of our clients that we're that we that we're working and and showing one thousand five hundred um, uh, uh, plays in all of these countries within a week. That is so rewarding, you know. And that type of, of reward, sorry, I have my sister coming in. This is this is this is the, the advantages of working from home, right? All the time. <laughs> so but this this is the um uh, oh I just actually lost I just lost my, my thought here. Um I don't remember what I was saying. <laughs> yeah, so but the, the reward the reward of, of, of being able to say, look, we've got all of these plays let's not give up let's continue and and then thanks to the radio plays we can go and knock at streaming we can knock at media we can knock at labels and say like typically uh we, we, we're getting some good plays in italy go back to the the office in italy and saying hey guys look there's this and this and this happening we're only on these let's say 20 smaller radios now it's time to go and maybe get the big one because we, we've been we've been supported by all these smaller radios, for example. So I guess it's, it's actually also argument. yeah. So it's also like uh, something like um, like concrete results you can use to actually sign new singles or license to other territories, etc. Absolutely. I mean, and then again, it's this whole snowball effect. One, you can help for licensing. Two, you can check your 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 publishing uh, money if it's coming in properly or not uh, three you can do uh, you can you can do your neighboring rights and then thanks to that maybe you can hope to get some sinks uh, there's so many things that are you know that that added values that come from radio plays fantastic rachel i think uh, we all learned a lot today 
Good. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy to see that and to hear that. So um, I'm happy that Brian is not going to give up. That's that's an important thing. <laughs> I know Brian. I, he's not a quitter. Good. Okie dokie. Um, good. Thank you so much for taking your time, Rachel. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Take care, guys. All Take the best. Care. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.